Um, well, I appreciate you taking some time. I know that uh, because of all that, you've had some trouble connecting, but uh, I'm glad that we're able to, to carve some time out here. But um, it's kind of, I mean, really, it kind of goes with the theme of what went wrong <laughs> with, with the ARG. <laughs> like, I, I, I think that's like the main focus of this, the more I think back about it. I mean, what are your main thoughts? And like, do you have like broad lessons you've learned? Like, what is, what, what do you think? You know, when you look back on the last like two months and everything that's inspired from like the the launch to the patch to the to the ARG that kind of culminated everything. Like, where do you settle on all that? <laughs> it's, it was the most chaotic and insane thing that's ever really happened to me when it comes to work. Like, and I've been through some pretty crazy stuff, but. I've never, I've never seen a community of people go from loving you to wanting you dead, <laughs> all over uh, hypothetical what ifs. Like they they come to their own conclusions about some really wacky shit, and then there's no basis, and it's all just kind of like conspiracy theory assumption. And there's just some really paranoid people out there. I mean, really, it was a a lot of it was a, a lot of the bad the bad aspects of it were was a lesson in. Um, and just how dangerous uh, people can get when there is a large community and they all, one person's like, well, I think this. And then if a, enough things point in that direction and you get enough people on your, you know, on your side, things can just spiral out of control and you can convince an entire community that something that is not remotely happening is completely happening and you need to, we need to do something about it. Um, it was very... Um, I think there's a there's a Twilight Zone called the Monster on Mulberry Street, mm -hmm. and it's about this whole community being suspicious of of these new people that move in, <clears throat> and uh, they it, it just ends up in like a Frankenstein bring out your your pitchforks and torches let's let's kill them sort of situation, and it all starts from just the suspicion of who are these people, what's going on here, you know, and then you know you get together and you get enough people and they become a scary kind of frightening mob that convinces everybody in it. It's weird because it's I'm getting ahead of myself, but it's to the point now where like I've kind of given up. Like I've I given up doing a post mortem, and this will be the closest thing that we come to it, <laughs> um, because the people that are convinced of the crazy shit that I'm not 100 percent sure of exactly what they think, but whatever conspiracy theories they've come up with of reasons why things have happened or why I'm evil, um, they will never be convinced otherwise. They are 110 percent sure that I'm awful and they want to punish me. Um, uh, under, even if you give them all the evidence in the world, that they are incorrect. Um, and those people are set in stone. And I feel like those are the people that I'd be... I, I started writing it and I started realizing I'm defending myself. Instead of, instead of doing a post-mortem, I'm defending myself against people that are attacking me for no reason. Um, and I, don't, I didn't want it to become that. I didn't want it to become this like... Here's the reasons why I didn't screw anybody over. And it's like, well, how about just the logical reason why I, I would gain nothing? <laughs> there would be nothing for me to gain. Like, complete just basic logic is just thrown out. Like, there's just no, there's no thought behind it. It just goes straight into insanity, and it's fucking frightening. Like, it's, it's just weird how people work in mobs and... Um, I don't know. Yeah, it got me going off of a bunch of different stuff. I started learning about these weird communities of people online who are actually mentally ill, um, who believe that they they're. It's called um, I think it's called gang gang stalking gang. Something. I don't know. Have you heard of anything like this? No. You, you'll it's have people, to elaborate. Are people that are paranoid schizophrenic. Basically, they 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 believe that people are organizing together to do subtle annoying things to harass them. I think it's called gang harassment or something like that. I'm looking at So up. it's just really basic. It's it's really interesting though. And the whole thing is like there's been controversy on, on YouTube and stuff because these people who have these mental illnesses will go on there and they will talk to their community of other paranoid people and they'd be like, yeah, I'm pretty sure this guy's recording me from his house. I keep seeing him looking at me. Um, everybody seems to be coming home at the same time and slamming their doors really loud and I'm pretty sure they're doing it to annoy me. People are following me too close on the highway and I notice all the cars are the same color, like that sort of stuff. 
Oh and, yeah, I just I just found some links to it on the internet. Yeah, I, I have heard of this. I don't think I've just I just haven't heard of the actual uh, terminology gang stalking, but I've definitely yeah. heard of people so, that uh, uh, believe the world is out to get them. Yes, but the the danger is the internet. The danger is the fact that there's there are the people that are looking and searching out these videos feel the same way, and they're feeding into the sickness. They're they're feeding in and they're telling these people, yes, this is happening to you. You need to do something about it. There's probably bugging your house. Look, look here, look there, look for these things. If this is happening, then for sure you're being stalked and people are doing this. And um, when you get a community of, of people who get into a paranoid thought pattern together, it becomes like that. It's like this, this, um, I don't know what to call it. It just, it's, it's a snowball effect, I guess, of, um, of insanity. I mean, again, it seems, it seems like people sort of end, they end up filling the vacuum, right? So, like, yeah, you know, if, like you, if you're speaking like specifically to like the pre-ARG and, and sort of the patch incident, um, that's a moment in which uh, you're working on the patch. So obviously, you're doing that. You're doing your job, and then in the vacuum, uh, people fill it with this uh, a theory. The theory snowballs, and then you, being someone that is well known over the years of being you know, eccentric and like having fun with the community and poking back and ribbing them cracks a joke and the the joke end up feeding into the initial cons- uh, theory that then becomes legitimized in some minds by the joke and that's that vacuum fills in the space in between the patch being delivered and giving people <laughs> what they wanted yeah. in the first place. Uh, yeah, basically. I mean, we can, we can run down it step by step because I never, again, I never did the postmortem, so I never got to give any kind of clear picture of exactly what went down and why and where things kind of went wrong and why. Um, because I knew, as you probably knew from doing the initial post when, when you talked about um, the possibility, I think, of there being an ARG and or something locked and then addressing the fact that um, there was content that was hacked out of the game previously. So when we launched the game with the lost stuff in it, <clears throat> I thought it was a really cool idea and... Uh, I spent a lot of time on it, um, and I, well, everybody did. I mean, the programmer spent a lot of time on it, too. And um, our lead programmer even said, like, it'll be months, even if you have the, <laughs> the best hackers out there, it'll be months before people even realize something's there. Famous last words. Yeah. <laughs> so it wasn't a big deal. Like, I knew, I knew that something eventually would just, just get messed up. I didn't know how fast it would happen. Um, I'm not you know, the most educated person when it comes to how people decompile games and, and find stuff. I'm just kind of going on what I've been told. So it was like, okay, you know, we'll add this in, whatever. At the, at the very least, once people figure it out, there's still a process of unlocking it that, that you would have to do in order to acquire this character. So it'd be kind of this little legend. But I thought at the very least, there'd be enough of it that got in place for people to say, oh, that was cool. When it happened, I was like, oh, shit, that sucks. And I made the mistake of actually doing interviews and saying like I was disheartened, but then you, the dilemma of doing any of these kind of interviews or whatever is that even if when you write this, Mm -hmm. no one will hear the way I'm talking. No one will hear if I'm laughing, they won't hear the way I, my, my voice is carrying these words. They won't hear how serious or whatever else. So when I just say, yeah, I was very disheartened by something in an interview, it wasn't a big deal. I, I talked about it in depth, but then that, that little thing, you know, Edmund disheartened by, by, um, by hackers or whatever. The data mining, yeah. Yeah, data mining. It got everywhere, and it and it became this quote, and people instantly assumed a voice in their head of me being butt hurt. Right. About I mean I'm an idiot because I should have known that people were going to hack it, and I'm being butt hurt about it because um, it, it's going to happen either way. You know, I'm just an idiot, whatever. Um, and uh, really, I didn't care. Really, it was just like, hey, it sucks. It, it sucks, but now I know if I do this again, I know how to do it right. Yeah, so, so from, it's like both, both things can be true. Like you can be disappointed <laughs> about it and also it's not a big deal, right? Yeah, like I, you, in your mind you had a certain way it was going to play out. It didn't. So, yeah, like when you build it up, it's a disappointment, but also it seems like, you know, you're not the kind of guy that's going to sit and, you know, uh, uh, shit on his community because of that. Yeah. It's more just, oops, that didn't work out the way it did. That, that sucks, that, and that, now that, we're going to move a, on. That is definitely a major piece of the puzzle of – the people who read that or heard, yeah, I heard that he was really butt hurt about people data mining his game, right, and ruining something. 
So that's that's a, a crucial part of the puzzle here. But on my on my from my perspective, when that happened, I was like, ah, okay. People can just hack anything out of the game. They can just data mine the hell out of it and find every little aspect of it. So I'm going to keep that in mind, and I can leave clues knowing that. I can leave pieces of things knowing that in the game to clue people on that maybe things will. There's more to go here, and then I will also not put the ARG in the game. I will start it there, allude to it happening, and then eventually it'll be this big thing that happens outside of the game. But the thing was, when this all started, I was, I was like, I didn't know if I was going to be available at all for the launch of the game, because the baby, she was born in like the beginning of October, like it's September 30th. So <clears throat> I was completely out uh, for quite a few weeks there. Right, um, sure. And because Danielle was in the hospital for a week, because there was a, a cesarean, and it was a whole big to-do. Mm-hmm. So I was completely out of commission. I was mostly out of commission when the game launched. And I remember talking to Tyrone, and I was like, okay, I want to do an ARG. I'm not sure if we can. So the the backup was the Keeper was going to be unlocked once the community, um, once there was a certain percentage of people that had the uh, the had beaten Greed, right. then we unlocked the Keeper, something like that. That was the, the fail-safe. Um, and then if I could do it, I was going to do this ARG, and then it was, we were just going to follow along and then unlock it when people actually complete the ARG. And never in my mind did I think anything could possibly go wrong, especially with those two options. Like, <laughs> I can't, you covered your bases. <laughs> yeah, if, I can't, if we can't do it, then it's just unlocked once people do the achievement, and they'll be like, oh, that's kind of lame, but whatever. There's more content here, and um, it's fine. It seemed fine. But it got to the point where I was like, okay, I think I can do this. And I literally... I had a, a rough idea of what I was going to do for the ARG, but I, I think I wrote it in about four days and just started just going balls to the wall with it, which my wife completely hated. And <laughs> the whole time, she's like, the worst fucking experience ever. Like, and it was stupid of me. I, obviously, I don't, um, <laughs> I wish, kind of wish I didn't do it uh, at all um, at this point. Because it was shitty uh, for a bunch of different reasons, but yeah, just, I'm just like things got so complicated. I'm running around town. I'm going to Kinko's in the middle of the <laughs> night, like trying to figure out. Like for for a while too, for one of the puzzles um, for the flyer that was actually in Santa Cruz at the boardwalk, um, the original idea was that the code was going to be written onto the paper, but with a paper over it, so you could just kind of faintly see the indentation of it. In the paper, right. But when I went and scouted the the area, I realized that it has been raining a lot, and that I don't know if I could hide something and have it be there for the amount of time needed. That was the thing I was the m- most paranoid about was that pu- piece of the puzzle because I couldn't really get up and leave whenever I wanted to because of the baby. So I couldn't go and fix anything. I couldn't follow along and then just b- go out there and. And, and put the stuff up. The stuff needed to be up for like a week. So it's like, how do I do this? And I was worried that the rain would damage it or get fucked up. So I was like, okay, I tested that part out and it wasn't going to work. So I decided to just write on the back of the piece of paper. So it kind of bled through. Right. And then copy that. So originally, and I even have the stuff still in the car. I have like five of physical, dr- physically drawn ones that I drew them all individually and actually had the indentation in the paper and everything. Um, but I, I realized that I needed at least 10 to 15 flyers and there's probably still some more stuck there because I needed, <laughs> that was an important piece of the puzzle that I needed to happen. I, I needed them not miss that. So I seeded the fuck out of that whole bridge. There's like 15 pieces of rolled up paper and, and, and like taped different places. And then I clued it in by putting small Isaac head stickers places to like, okay, it's going to be. Wherever there was an Isaac Head sticker, there were like five hidden um, copies of the piece of paper. And that was just like, oh my god. But um, yeah, so I, I, I'm planning this whole thing and and uh, I thought, okay, well, well, we'll still tie it to the initial, once people get the, this achievement, then we'll kind of go from there. Um, and then we'll spawn it from the achievement change. And that was kind of the, 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 the start of the whole thing. But... Um, I wasn't paying a lot of attention to the launch and I didn't really understand what was going on. So I'm only getting a little bit of information because 
I'm running around trying to do this ARG and make sure this all the stuff is. I went through the code so many times because if you fuck up one, one number or letter, it, it, everything is it just destroyed. Like right. everything has to be tested and perfect. Like I need to make sure that that S is that exact hex code number or that exact you know uh, HTML number because <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I'm writing on I'm frantically writing on uh, actual physical things and then you know one day shipping them down to uh orange county so uh so tyrone can bury it in the ground <laughs> so it's doing all this crazy stuff so i'm super focused on that and um i think i realized that people are starting to get that there's something going on and that's when i kind of noticed that people were really stuck to the idea that this was another lost situation and that the, the, the they were going to unlock it by doing something in the game. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know how to get people to stop thinking that way. And I, I tried to make as many vague hints as possible about it, which ended up going wrong <laughs> in many different ways. Like it was frustrating because some people would really get it. And there'd be like a few people that were like, Oh, okay. It's definitely not in the game. Um, it's going to be, it's an ARG. Like it's, this is still, it was, wasn't, people weren't sure if it was an actual real life thing or if it was something that they do in the game. Right. Because I'll tweet something and I'll tweet something vague about getting outside or something like that. And then people are like, oh, maybe there's a way to bomb from the first floor so you can go outside <laughs> in the game. <laughs> so it was, it was kind of chaotic, but I'm still having fun with it. And I'm, and I'm, people are really focused on uh, the 109 thing. And that's where that all started. So like, is that is the one or not? Did you is, did you just pluck that because it was a funny myth in the community? Yeah. Okay. I, I mean was, that's what I figured. Like it's, the one o nine thing too didn't funny to be true. Didn't have any relevance to anything. Right. It was purely a bug, like it was a launch bug that we didn't know existed, and I think it was like the weekend. And when we figured out that it was a bug, and we're like, oh shit, and nobody's in the office, we can't do anything until Monday or whatever. So I'll write that into the ARG. And because it seems funny, because people are so focused on this number, right? It's the the bank breaks at one oh nine. <clears throat> I thought, okay, well, we'll we'll fix it, um, and then people are actually able to get, they'll start actually getting to the achievement, and we can kind of like go from there. And that I think that was around the time where people started saying time gated content. I didn't know what that was. I had never heard of that term before. Me either. Uh, that was that was that was new to me. And I, I mean. These days, it's difficult because I think there's a certain cynicism, I think, that's somewhat earned by a lot of players, uh, given the way that a lot of games sort of screw people over or screw people around in terms of, you know, DLC and season passes. So I think there's a certain yeah. cynicism, uh, but it, it, always, it struck me as odd that people pointed the finger your way, or maybe it speaks to the ingrained cynicism of people these days, that they would point the finger your way, given that... There just seems nothing about your game or how you've conducted the Binding of Isaac or, or the expansions that suggested <laughs> suddenly, like you've clearly done very well because of this game and the community loves you and loves the game. Why would now be the time where you turn into a total dick? It just it just struck me as an odd moment for the community to uh, yeah, sort of double they, down on they, that theory. But they definitely found a reason. Right. They they found my motive. Like, but I get, we'll get to that. <laughs> <laughs> sure. So. Um, around that time, the time gated content thing, I was like, what does this mean? I remember like Googling it and trying to figure out what does time gated content mean? And why are people upset? And they're like, you know, oh, I see what he's doing. Cause a lot of people are like, oh, we're not going to get the items. And I'm like, what are the items? And this is after the patch. Um, right. so you can actually get the achievement. And I'm like the items. I'm like, what is going on? I'm like, uh, and I'm like, oh, they're talking about the, the keeper items. Cause everybody started saying, on the website, I promised X amount of items, but um, there are items missing. So I read that, and I was like, oh, well, duh, like, because there are items for the shopkeeper when you beat stuff with him. Um, that must be what they're talking about. So I, I just said, oh, I, I assumed that I solved the problem, and I started, like, again, alluding to the fact that all the content was in the game. Don't worry about it. Like, just keep, continue what you're doing. Everything's going great. And, and then I think... About seven days in, maybe, I suddenly realized after doing some testing myself, I was looking on websites and I was seeing what people had discovered because there's a lot of hidden um, aspects to items that we don't detail out. And it's always exciting to me when people find those things. And uh, I was looking through them and I was like, wait, where is this item? 
I'm like, I'm like through and I'm like, no one's discovered that item yet. I'm like, but that was one of the items that I like teased on, on the website. And I, and I look through again and I'm like, wait, where's this item? I keep going through and I realize that there's a bunch of items that are missing that aren't tied to the keeper. And I go back through my, uh, my build, my latest build, and I, in debug mode, I can spawn items. And I start going through, you know, it's like spawn item 305, spawn item 306, spawning all these items. And then I get to like some of the new later items and I'll spawn an item like 450 and then nothing spawns. And I like look it up and there's no name for it. I'm like, what's going on? And then I do like 51, 52. And all these items are gone. I'm like, what the fuck's going on? And I go back to my old build before launch, look that up. And the items are there. And I'm like, oh my god, there's items missing. We just patched the game. <laughs> we didn't even know that there were like 20 items that were just gone. And I still don't know how it happened, but it had something to do with them locking out the keeper and like I think removing some of the items that were tied to him and it just got tied to other things. I wow. honestly don't know the logistics right. of how, how things went wrong. And I don't think I'll ever find out because I don't want to. I don't want to point the finger at somebody, <laughs> and that person's never going to take credit for it either way. But <laughs> sure, some of the shit definitely went wrong. We didn't know about it. I, I'm the one that saw it. I was like, oh shit, we are missing items. Where are these items? And I'm like messaging Tyrone. I'm like, there's a ton of items that are just gone, and they are not. They have nothing to do with the keeper. A lot of those were unlocks that were supposed to unlock via the keeper's uh, donation machine, which mm -hmm. were also bugged. Um, but a good chunk of them were just gone. And, I, and then I realized, oh shit, that's what people are talking about. They're talking about this content that's actually not in the game that I didn't know wasn't in the game. And I'm telling everybody, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. I'm like, ah shit, what am I going to do? So what I did was I took a screenshot, a garbled screenshot of the items that I had that were in the game that, people, that were missing from other people's games to assure people that the items are there, we're going to patch it, everything's going to be good. And uh, that just caused more problems. Because <laughs> people thought that somehow the, the items were in the game really now. And that they could get them somehow. And it caused this huge thing of like, oh, we got to do this and we got to do that. And I'm trying to like tell people, no, wait, just wait until, wait until this day. We're going we're gonna to patch everything in. Don't worry about it. The day comes for the patch. Um, it's really close to... 10, 10 o'clock or something like that or some some 109 time and uh, Tyrone jokingly says we should release it at that time for fun and I said sure let's do it so we release it and put it up and it patches the game everybody gets their um, their items and everything's great I go to sleep I wake up the next morning and it is the biggest shit storm I've ever seen people are fucking I, I time gated content because I'm mad about people hacking the game and I, I, I withheld for a week. I withheld 20 something items that I promised everybody would have at lunch because I'm an angry asshole. Um, and people are saying, you know, it happened to, it, it, it was what exactly 109 hours that people took to hack the game and get, you know, data mine the game and get the lost, uh -huh. which isn't true. Somebody just made that up. I know. I really like that, though. Like, I, I, know, I, I mean, I, I knew when I – both times I mentioned in stories, I, I remember putting caveats like, this sounds like total bullshit. But isn't it awesome if it is true? Because it would be hilarious. So it was just like all these crazy 109 coincidences started popping up. And it was like, wow, this really got away from us. And – there, there were just all these really simple things, and it. I started to get pissed because I started to be like, "Why am I doing this fucking ARG? I'm killing myself doing this stuff." And people are just now; it's just starting, and people are hate. They all hate me. They all fucking hate me on Reddit because they think this, this, this. So I got on Twitter and I was like, without breaking the 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 fourth wall or whatever, I I, I wanted to say, I wanted to say, there is an ARG happening. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that all this stuff that you think is going on isn't happening. I wouldn't do that. I did say that. I said, that this is stupid. Why would I do that? It's, it, it's so far from the truth. And there is something still happening that it's not this is thing. working on that is going to unlock stuff that wasn't promised at all. So I'm not withholding any, 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 any content or whatever. And in the stuff that wasn't in the game at launch was bugged. 
and we just fixed it. We didn't know it existed. Like, there's so much content in this game. It's so hard to keep track of. It's insane. Like, I went seven days without realizing 20 items were missing. Me! I made the game! <laughs> like, it's, it, it, it just, it's, the game is huge. The game is stupidly huge. There's so many ways it could go wrong. And people are like, oh, what a disastrous launch. And I remember thinking, like, it wasn't too bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> only 20 it's, items. It's not items this in this was, game. Yeah, this was, this was, they weren't there. I mean, all those people weren't there for all the other launches. Like, any Isaac, any Isaac-related launch went awful. Because there are a million ways things can go wrong. And there's a million ways things can get busted. Right. And be stupid and not fair and unfun. And if anything, I've noticed that's part of uh, part of the fun for the community is that brief those like first seven days or so when it's like, all right, shit's gonna be weird. Like, find the funny exploit and unlock all the stuff that you want to do exactly. because like it's gonna be gone in a couple of days. And like you know, you watch the Reddit threads and the Steam forums, and like that's like a celebratory moment for most yeah. people. Is is like, haha, we got like we got one up on Edmund before he patches this <laughs> out. You know, like that's part of the. It is it, to me. It has seemed like that has been part of. What uh, drives that community is that? Yeah, it's it's it's, it's almost like a launch ritual. Yeah, it, it really is. Like, I won't name names, but we had we had a lot of testers. We had a lot of testers. We had a shitload of testers this time, which is funny because so many things went wrong. <laughs> but uh, uh, we had a tester that was withholding information um, so they could use the exploits that they discovered. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> So we found out about it, though, and we're like, oh, you can't really do this anymore. That's super good, though. I mean, if any, like, that's awful uh, from the tester's perspective and what their job is, but that, I feel like that, you know, that's a testament to your game in some way that someone yeah. would go to that extreme uh, to want to use those by the time the game ships. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah, it was it was an interesting experience. But again, <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to juggle this all with this newborn baby. Well, that's what I was going to say. It seems like, you know, it is the, the confluence of, like, so many factors, some within your control, some outside of your control, and then it all goes sideways and then continues to go sideways. <laughs> it, was, it was a wacky, a wacky situation. But, yeah, then the ARG started. People realized it was real. Um, the people who were already, they already hated me were still going to just hate me, you know. And, uh, and the people that enjoyed it really enjoyed it. The actual ARG was... Really fun. Again, my wife hated that. Actually, <laughs> too. I think it was. I had to get up. We had to get up at like, like six or something, uh, so we could prepare to go to one of the. Our, our daughter. Her name is Peach. Um, her first. Uh, it was like I think it was just yeah. Her first appointment. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that was the night that people solved the ARG. And <laughs> I was I was literally up at like two in the morning watching people's live stream of digging up the shopkeeper. <laughs> and, and Danielle was waking up going, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> are you on your phone? Are you still awake? I'm like, I'm fine. I, I can drive tomorrow. Don't worry about it. I'm just watching people dig a hole in the ground. <laughs> and I'm like, nothing like, weird. I'm like, they found it. They found it. And she's like, shut up. <laughs> I don't fucking care. I hate this. She'd always say that. You're never doing this again. I hate this. Um, but yeah, the ARG part was super fun. I had I had a really fun time designing it. It was it's I really like anything where I can design on the fly and like kind of improvise w within a limited time frame. It's it's not something you usually get to do unless you're like doing a game jam or something. So I was gonna say it seemed like you know because you come from a background of doing a lot of short, uh, yeah, fast design games, and you don't don't. I mean, you still do that a little bit, but certainly not as much as you used to. Yeah, no. And is there something about it happening in the real world? That like I mean obviously you make games for a living but you know was there something different about it being tangible and watching people and you know you there's watch a live there's stream something but different about it I think the the best aspect about it for me was the fact that there was no gain in my there was no nothing to gain from it right so it wasn't like I was doing it for a financial reason or whatever like there was absolutely nothing that I gained it, it, I'm only losing from it <laughs> you know what I mean like I'm losing time. Um, and, uh, and, and effort and, and whatever and, and else. And glares from your wife. Yeah. And, uh, I'm doing it purely for the love of game design and the excitement of doing something that I know will be exciting for other people because I'm, again, I'm like anything, I'm designing it for me. Like, I'm, how cool would it be if this game that I liked did this real life thing 
and I was a part of it. So I went out of my way to make tangible things, like you said, like stuff that people could keep. And even after the fact, I, I told, I tweeted and said that there's more people, if people want little, little, uh, uh, tangible, like little posters and stuff like that, that I left on the bridge, like there's some left over, you can go take them. And I don't know, that's it's something that I would have loved when I was younger and, uh, or even today. <laughs> and, uh, so yeah, I wanted to do stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, there was just a lot of really cool twists and turns that I got to design. And I think the coolest aspect was that I, a lot of people still don't even understand it, but I'm, the ARG was a, was an ending of the game. Like the ARG was a part of the story. Like it, it told a story of, from a completely different perspective that I couldn't do in the same way in the game um, because it would be too literal. So I got to kind of play around with this loosely written conclusion almost from, you know, you get to, I mean, you get to meet Isaac's father. It's something that's just never addressed. Mm-hmm. And uh, in, in, in the, the what ifs of what happened to Isaac after. And I don't think anybody even talks about it, but I thought it was fucking awesome. <laughs> and uh, for, for you know, the few people who actually cared to think about the meaning behind each of the steps of the puzzle and, and the, 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 the hows and the whys and, and the story and theme that went along with it, I thought it was a really cool, profound ending that I know that the people involved, like when they heard Isaac's father's voice um, on the phone, they got chills and got creeped the fuck out. So I, you definitely I'm, you definitely saw that in you know when I was following along as everything was happening you know it was you know often with these ARGs you know I'm the kind of person that likes to even when I'm not you know reporting on them uh, sit on the sideline and just watch people work like I'm just not the kind of person that's gonna you know do all of the the number crunching and stuff I like to kind of just uh, be there and speculate and you would see in the in the Reddit threads where you get half the people that are like kind of working on what's the next step and then half the people going like like holy shit like let's talk about what this means like this actually has like a relevance beyond just a puzzle to solve and yeah. I feel like that I feel like that will become clearer or, or mean more over time you know as as it's separated from the puzzle itself and just becomes part of sort of the mythology of the game yeah, there's no really other good way to kind of do it I, I love doing little special one-offs like that like I it nobody really knows about it other than this handful of people but me and my wife used to do live streams and stuff um, years ago very intimate like a hundred fans or whatever right. that happen to follow my wife on Twitter um, keeps out the riffraff, you know. You just yeah, get sure, sure. People who are more gentle, I guess. And um, we would do some interesting things. It's hard to go into detail of exactly what, but we had some interesting experiences on there that were almost kind of like improvised art in a way. And only those hundred people got to experience it, and it can never be replicated. And um, and the same thing with this ARG, like between 100 and 500 people that were involved um, got to experience this. It's, it was a very intimate little thing, which I think is awesome. It's the closest thing to to playing live, if that makes sense. No, sure, yeah, absolutely. And I thought it was really cool. Uh, I don't have it in me to do it again anytime soon. <laughs> I feel like but, um, uh, it's the same way that uh, people say that when they have the first kid, like, oh, I could never do this again. Yeah. And then suddenly, two years later, they got another kid. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, a lot of the stuff that I said I won't do again, I, I have I've definitely warmed up to over time. So. <laughs> well, it's I mean it's just like anything else, you know. It's the immediacy of the moment, you know. You feel exhausted and you need to give yourself space before you can even creatively think of what that might be. Uh, yeah, another sure. go around. Um, but I, but I guess uh, you know one of the things that happened after all of this, uh, and what I had originally contacted you about was uh, this sense of you wanting to to step away, which you touched on at the beginning. And it, it kind of gave me the sense that, you know, as much as you deeply love your community and, and you definitely seem like the kind of, you know, part of the, I think part of the success of your game has been the fact that you are so involved with the community. I think that kind of goes hand in hand with it being a good game um, is that you also feel uh, like I think a lot of creative people feel that it can be sometimes tough because as close as you get to that community, when you touch the more toxic elements, you can feel that affecting your life. And it seemed yeah. like that was happening to you and you at some point had to say, I'm not going away, but I have to step away because this is actually hurting my day to day. Yeah, it's um I mean it's it's a kind of an exercise in self-control, I guess, like 
it, it, this isn't the first time and will be the last time that I come in and leave. <laughs> like I, I, I know, I know when it's getting poisonous, um, on my end. And, um, sometimes I take a step back so I can just, you know, see things from perspective of like, what am I, what do I want? What am I gaining from this? And so on and so forth. I, I struggled with it a lot around the Meepoy time <clears throat> because I, back then I was on this kind of roller coaster rider of like, I need to, I need to, to do as much as I possibly can for my career because this is it. Like this is the final hurrah. Like this is, I, I'm trying as hard as I possibly can and I need to floor it in order to get where I want. And I was able to do that through Meat Boy development and then continue afterwards. And I kind of kept going and I kind of saw myself moving forward and maybe like, I like looked around and saw, well, what am I doing? Like, I feel, what am I doing this for? Like, am I doing this for more financial gain? Am I, am I doing this for, uh, what do I want to be more popular or, or what, what do I, what do I actually want out of this? Because it's taking up a lot of my life and I'm neglecting the more important things in my life, like my relationship with my wife and friends, um, you know, my own personal health and so on and so forth. And I don't want to be this kind of, uh, ego driven person, which is probably one of the reasons why that was the thing that I saw online that really pissed me off was people were like, Oh yeah, his ego is out of control. And, uh, that was just a weird thing. Cause that was the, that's the only thing about me that I don't want to happen. I don't want to have an ego. Like, I feel like I, I, I kind of go out of my way to be as humble as possible because I don't want to ever think of myself. I feel like it's more, it's, I'll be a better artist if I'm more critical of myself and I don't think I'm the shit and I don't think I'm the shit. I, I'm not a huge fan of myself. Um, and I like to keep that moving and it's, you know, once a, a community starts viewing me as somebody who has an ego that's out of control, maybe I should be removing myself from the picture or, or something. But like yeah, in the past, I've just run into that and uh, start, start realizing I'm spending time worrying about people talking about me or being relevant in the, uh, you know, video game community. And it's like, wait a minute. I don't like these people. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> what am I doing? It's just like I, I – you, it's easy just as a human to get lost in these broken animal things of like I need to be the best and I need everybody to like me and blah, 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 blah. And uh, you get so swept up in it and it just kind of takes you. And it's you, – when you take a step back, you're like, oh, shit. Like I, I, you feel like you were sick, like you were obsessed and you got nothing from it. Nothing. Nothing, nothing, nothing. It's so empty. Like, I got a million times more feelings from doing the ARG, the su successful aspect of the ARG, right. um, with the community, uh, than all the praise and uh, press and whatever else that I've ever gotten. It's just like, there's just certain things that hold more weight for me. And... Uh, I need to realize that and I need to kind of stay true to that. So there are times where I, I, I look too much. I look too much and maybe care too much and I shouldn't allow myself to do that. So I kind of got to focus back on the things that are important. And especially after having a baby, like your whole priorities change for sure. And you kind of have a better, I have an easier time letting go for sure. Like I could give up on everything and just be with my wife and her and that's it. Like I have... No issues with that. Um, I probably wouldn't be the best husband, and I'm sure my wife would eventually be like, "You better go and start working on something. <laughs> go make a go make a please, go make a game, please. Thank God." Yeah, because I'm not. It, w when I get in creative ruts and I'm not being creative, I do get awful. I, I do. Like I'm not the most pleasant person to be around. Um, but being creative and being relevant are completely different things. And I, the thing that I want is to just be creative. I want to create cool stuff and uh, have fun doing it regardless of if it brings me uh, financial gain or critical praise or, or whatever else. Um, I just uh, really enjoy it. And um, it's frustrating because I, I, I don't feel like 
This is a very big tangent. I don't feel like many other people in my community of designers feel that way. I don't. I don't. I don't know many people that I that share that um, side of things. It's kind of. It's kind of frustrating. <laughs>